Juice, Gear, Stacker, Arnold's, Roids. No, these are not the members of my new boy band. These are some of the street names for anabolic steroids. The drugs favored by bodybuilders to give their biceps a boost. I hope Jack has improved them. You've no doubt heard about steroids in the press, how athletes have been caught with them in their systems, how people once skinny have suddenly and remarkably beefed up their bodies. But what's the big deal? What do steroids actually do to the body? And why have they got such a bad rap? First things first, let's get our definitions right. Because chemically speaking, a steroid is any organic molecule with 17 carbon atoms arranged into four rings. Other elements and structures glued onto those, there's actually no glue, determine exactly what kind of steroid you have. But at the basic level, they all have those four carbon rings. And there are loads and loads of different steroids that occur naturally and have different functions in the human body. Cholesterol for instance, is a steroid that's found in all of our cell membranes. And the male hormone testosterone is a steroid too, which you'll want to remember for later. Steroids are typically prescribed as anti-inflammatory drugs to treat things like asthma and irritable bowel syndrome. But these are not the roids we're looking for. The much maligned muscle maximizing molecules we're talking about are anabolic steroids, or if you prefer even more of a mouthful, anabolic androgenic steroids. Anabolic steroids are basically a group of molecules that have a very similar structure and function to the male sex hormone testosterone. Hormones are effectively chemical messengers in our bodies, traveling around in the blood and attaching onto cellular receptors to trigger specific processes in specific locations. And testosterone is no exception. The sex hormone is well known for triggering the development of masculine features and characteristics. It's said to have both androgenic effects, that's producing male features like facial hair, and anabolic effects, stimulating muscle and bone growth by making proteins. Men naturally produce a lot more testosterone than women, which explains why men are usually more manly. But there's a limit to how much testosterone the body can produce naturally. And that means there's a limit to muscular growth. Time to enter synthetic anabolic steroids. These substances are prescribed by doctors to treat wasting diseases like cancer and AIDS or stimulate male puberty. But they've also been adopted illegally by the body and performance conscious sporting community in an effort to attain the supposedly ideal muscular figure. These steroid users will routinely inject themselves or swallow tablets containing 10 to 100 times the medical dose with the goal of getting bigger, leaner and stronger. So let's take a look at how that actually works. Th thanks. When we work out, we put strain on our muscles. Our skeletal muscle, that's the muscles that makes our bones move, like our biceps or our glutes or our calves, is made of muscle fibers that slide past each other when the muscles contract and expand. If we lift a weight that's just a little bit too heavy, trust me this is, some of those fibers are physically broken and need to be fixed so that the muscle can function properly again. For this, extra proteins come in and reinforce the fibers, making them physically thicker and the muscle increases in size. The process is known as muscle hypertrophy, but it's normally limited because natural levels of testosterone aren't high enough to allow much protein to be created. But taking anabolic steroids changes that. With more testosterone-like chemicals around and provided that there are enough building blocks, enough amino acids in the blood, much more reinforcing protein can be created, making the muscles bigger and bigger. Interestingly, the steroids won't work on their own without the right exercise and a protein-rich diet. Scientists cunningly found this out by subjecting rats to different steroid levels and different types of exercise, including unbelievably, a specially designed rat squat machine. So you take the steroids and your muscles get bigger. Sounds good, right? Well, injecting yourself with testosterone substitutes can have some unexpected and unwanted side effects. Let's not forget that these anabolic steroids are hormone messengers that travel all around the body, not just that particular muscle that you want to upgrade. So by pumping such large doses into your body, the chemicals can play havoc 
with your normal bodily functions. And I'm not exaggerating here. The list of possible adverse effects is long and scary. So you've got acne, high blood pressure, blood clots, baldness, liver tumours, breasts developing in men, facial hair in women, erectile dysfunction, even shrunken testicles, all caused by one very potent molecule interfering with the way things are normally done. High doses of anabolic steroids are even reported to have psychiatric effects as the chemicals affect nerve cells in the brain, leading to bursts of manic aggression called roid rage. Some hardcore steroid users attempt to dodge these grisly side effects by carefully controlling their steroid taking routine. One technique, cycling, where users take regular breaks in their self-medication. Another is stacking, where they combine several different anabolic steroids. And pyramiding, that involves gradually increasing the dose over time. But the one tiny problem with all of these routines is that none of them have been scientifically proven to mitigate side effects whatsoever. In fact, the scientific understanding of steroid use is still so incredibly limited, we don't really know how these drugs affect the body as a whole. So if you needed any extra persuading not to do illegal drugs, then the potential for uncontrollable, unpredictable, and possibly even irreversible physical and mental changes should be it. Plus, it's just possible to look too ripped, right? That's my excuse when I fancy chocolate anyway. If you found this video interesting, be sure to like and subscribe uh, to BBC Earth Lab for more great science videos. And what drugs would you like me to delve into next? I've done LSD and marijuana. Done as in, of course, covered for the channel. Uh, leave your suggestions in the comments below. See you next time.